10 seconds. Welcome to Thrash Zone. That was Exodus with 44 Opus Magnum. I love it. <laughs> and we have on the line Dave Ellison of Megadeth. How are you, Dave? Hey, how you guys doing? We are doing great. Tell us about the new band that you got going with Frank Bellow, Altitude and Attitude. You know, it just it started just uh, quite honestly. We were on a stage, I think, in London, uh, doing a bass clinic together. And I said to Frank, I said, you know, rather than us just playing Anthrax to Megadeth songs, which everyone already sees us play, we should write some tunes together and uh, you know, kind of just have our own our own clinic music and stuff that we could either play as a band or use it just as some backing tracks for these for these clinic kind of performances. So. You know, it, it took a year later, we finally spoke to Jay Rustin, who is um, the producer for Anthrax and Stone Sour and a bunch of different artists, and Jay's a bass player, so he said, man, I'm in, I'd love to I'd love to do something like that, it'd be great, and he uh, suggested we use Jeff Friedel, who plays drums in the Perfect Circle, and and Pussifer and uh, Devo, and uh, <laughs> so this past year, we, we put it together, we actually, we, 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 um, Anthrax came through town. I went down and picked Frank up and came over to my house, and we sat around for a few hours one afternoon to kind of got the songs lined out. And and um, and we went into the studio during the Golden Gods. We happened to all be in L.A. Uh, I guess it was, what, May? Back in something like that, May of um, of this last year. And we, we tracked the three tunes and got all the overdubs done. And then when we all played the Battle of San Bernardino with Iron Maiden together, we stayed behind a couple extra days and finished up all the overdubs and mixed it. And once we heard it, we were like, wow, this is like a lot more than some clinic tracks here. <laughs> so, now, who, um, who's Frank singing? Is, it, hand, uh, is, Megaforce is Frank singing on these tracks? About it. And uh, so they released it this last week, and here we are. Is Frank singing on these tracks? He is, yep. He's singing on him. all of them. All he, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, cool. the, the first time I got a taste of his singing was on the uh, the Masters uh, tour, Metal right. Masters. Yeah, and I and I saw him singing. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's got a great, great voice. I mean, he's just such a charismatic, cool, fun-loving guy, you know. And that he is. He just steps up to the mic and belts it out, and, uh, and that to me is me and rock and roll. That's what that's what a singer. Is. <laughs> that's what it's all about. I'll just sing your heart out, Dave. Um, yeah. You know, I know you only have a few minutes tonight. So uh, I just want to get real quick to you. When are you guys going to be coming to the Northwest? Do you have any Portland dates scheduled? For me and Frank, you're yeah. talking about? Yes, for Altitudes and Attitude. You know, um, we've got some, it's funny, some offers are starting to come in. In fact, as soon as the, the thing was actually released last week, offers started coming in. We've got some stuff in the Midwest that we're looking at doing um, probably in March, kind of actually some actually coming up in February even. Um, and, you know, we're just going to kind of just roll with it as it comes. Um, you know, it's, it's one of these things, obviously, we're both busy and, you know, we got a lot of Megadeth touring coming up this year, Anthrax is making a record, so it, it's, um, it, it's kind of a fun little thing we can do on the side when our schedules allow, mm -hmm. um, if, uh, people throw some offers over to us, we're, we're going to try to go out and make some of them work. So That's nothing on the cool. books yet for your area, but, you know, All it, right. it's kind of something that will probably pan itself out for us. Well, you know, the the last time I, that I had personally seen you play here in Portland was at the Dust Bowl with uh, <laughs> with Testament and Slayer. It was um, in Hillsborough, actually, Washington County yeah, Fairgrounds. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember, remember that, that, the American Carnage Tour? Yep, I remember it well. Yep. Yeah, well, you guys blew. I mean, you just blew everyone away that night. Megadeth was just incredible. <laughs> I yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, you know we've been doing it a long time, you know. So uh, everybody, I guess, <laughs> on a tour like that, everybody's kind of got their thing. You know, Slayer is Slayer, and Testament, of course, they don't need us to sing their praises. They they've made their mark, and we do what we do, and uh, and it, it, I like those kind of those those bills. You know, to me, I mean, headlining shows are fun too, but. Uh, I like the bigger, I like the enormity when you bring several groups together, I think. Absolutely. Important. Well, that, yeah. that, that particular tour was the, uh, I believe, the uh, Rust in Peace tour. It was um, the... Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 So you played yeah. the entire album uh, on that. Yeah, it was very cool. And, and that record especially because... One uh, of my favorites. 
You know, that's that's just yeah, that's one of those those fan favorite records, you know. So yeah, that was and it was the first time we'd ever done something like that where we go out and play a whole record top to bottom. So yeah, it was very cool actually. Yeah. Right on, Dave. Yeah, I'm so I'm so glad that you took the time out. Just even I know you only have a few minutes, but God, even just a few minutes, just to grace us, you know, and just let us know what's going on yeah, with Megadeth and all the I I'm I'm what are you guys doing? I'm actually up early tomorrow heading to Nam, so I'm gonna get running here. But yeah, thank yeah. you for reaching out to me and thanks for showing some support to our uh, attitudes and altitude. <laughs> altitude and attitude and uh and and uh and just you know, on it some love, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely, Dave. And I'm going to go ahead and play some right now. I'll, I'll talk to you another time, Dave. We'll catch up on some uh, on some of the old days. Yeah. Uh, everybody, Excellent. this is yeah. You have a good night. That is Dave Thank Ellison of Megadeth on his new band with Frank Bello called Altitudes and Attitudes. I'm going to play a track right now. It's called Booze and Cigarettes. You guys are going to love this tune.
How many stupid people do you know that you could dedicate that song to? <laughs> We're in the studio right too many. We're in the studio right now with God Denied. And you guys, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? I'm Matt, I'm the drummer. I'm Dan, I'm the singer. Ogre. <laughs> <laughs> Just Ogre. I, I play bass. <laughs> right. Yeah, our guitar is Shane. He's not here tonight. He's out on the coast. These are three guys if you see walking down the street, run. <laughs> Hold on to your wallet and run because these guys <laughs> Yeah, they're probably just offering you a beer. But right. run. <laughs> Never know what's in it. <laughs> this is God denied. No, so honestly these are these are three great guys and I'm glad to have them in. I, I asked them to come in tonight because um, you know. Joshua very very well known from American Roulette. And uh, you know, I know that you guys aren't new. God denied's been around how long? Almost four years. Four years, yeah. exactly. So, is it that you've actually just joined, and or is this? Yeah, this is a totally new band for me. Uh, for you? Yeah. yeah. After I left Roulette, man, I've known these brothers for a couple of years now, and just uh, you know joined up and You've been, been fucking us, uh, what six eight months. Now? Six eight months now, yeah, something like that, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it, man. It's really more in my vein of uh, you know I've always been a huge death metal fan, and you know Roulette's more. You know, kind of the bro, like, yeah. kind of metal, you know, which I fucking love, too, you know. But, uh, you know, as far as my love for playing, you know, fucking death metal's where it's at for me, you know. Right. <laughs> and these guys, Wayne, if you've never heard a cut from God Denied, these guys, they, they kick in the speed. They're, like, right up there with... Well, well I can't wait. You got something lined up, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Do I ever? <laughs> no, do I? We'll turn up the speakers in here when that song is playing. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get ready to mosh because... Um, Jump around and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Don't get the mics. <laughs> I hope your security deposit uh, paid up in this place because this room's about to start moshing when we play some of this. <laughs> right. All right. Um, Joshua, there was something I wanted to ask you real quick. Um, <laughs> and, and you're because you're, you're part of the uh, New York death metal. New York Death Militia, yeah. Death right. Militia, excuse me, yeah. And uh, Chris Contos is a member from California. Yeah, yeah. And I'm good friends with Chris Contos. And he and we talked about this. Uh, we touched Yeah, we had it. chatted about it a little bit. Yeah. Actually, I think, Matt, you probably know Chris better than I do. Yeah, I know Chris quite a bit. But so, what, what I was curious on is what do you do as an Oregon Death Militia enforcer? What is it that you do? Well, it's uh, basically I enforce the, the bylaws of the club, you know, make sure everybody's staying on the up and up, uh, uh, help people, uh, you know, stay safe at shows and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, just basically keep things cool, you know, and make sure everybody's being respectful to our venues and to each other, you know, and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, just to touch a little more on that, um, the whole idea of the, the death militia, right, is for musicians so that they have, like, a home when, when as they're traveling from city to city and whatnot, they, they may not know where to go or have a place to stay. Is that kind of like a brotherhood like that where you can kind of say, hey, crash at my place? Or What exactly is it? It is. It's a, 
if I might chime in. Yes, please. One. Yeah. It, it's basically, it's a, it's a group that's uh, formed out of New York, and we all have our home chapters, which would be Oregon, California, Washington, so on and so on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if the bands come through, we take care of them, give them a place to stay, you know, and help hook up the show. Get them drunk. The main thing, yeah. <laughs> the main thing is hooking up the show, because who knows your area better than you? you right, know? right. And so we'll get the show all rolling. It's the same thing. If we go out, we'll contact our brothers and sisters in the Death Militia, and they'll help us out in their areas as well. And it works out great. It keeps the underground music scene alive. And uh, speaking of which, uh, hails to all my brothers and sisters out there listening. So, so it's a place where uh, um, a musician can know, know and trust and, and say, well, this is a place I can lay my head. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It helps with touring and everything, it, it just in all aspects of keeping the metal scene alive. Yeah, I th I'm really down with that. I, I think that's really great that you guys do that. All right, well, um, you know, we're going to go ahead and play a track from God Denied right now. This is called Army of the Damned.
Those are my friends, uh, Cultural Warfare. That was Whitechapel. That's a band out of the San Francisco Bay Area. What do you think of that, guys? Pretty good stuff. Guys. Yeah. Shit, you know Cultural Warfare? Billy Garut? Uh, yeah, Great guys, man. Time, yeah. yeah. Uh, what I have before that? I forgot. What did I play? God Denied. <laughs> <laughs> armies of darkness armies of the darkness Arm armies of the damned armies of the damned yeah, right. armies of the damned I will get this right yes <laughs> I'm only one beer in man come on okay. it takes me at least three before I wake up <laughs> that, that in a bowl <laughs> we're here right now with God Denied a band out of Portland, Oregon these guys freaking shred they are not for the wimps and uh, I don't know, you guys should be playing a lot of good shows, man. What do you got lined up? And we got a, a show coming up in February with Embryonic Devourment from California. Mm -hmm. uh, who else do we have on that? We have a Coic <laughs> who is also here uh, from Portland in Hyborian Rage. That is going to be at uh, Katie O'Brien's on, uh, when is that? The 7th? Uh, Saturday, February 15th, the yeah. day after Valentine's Day. There you go. So after you get dumped by your girlfriend, you can come listen to some metal. <laughs> yeah, bang your head. <laughs> right? <laughs> I like that. Drink away your sorrows. Yeah. <laughs> we also yep. have a show coming up at uh, Slab Town, March. Slab Town. Right, March, uh, I think March it's 7th, I think March it is. 7th. March yeah. 7th, yeah. It's a, a memorial show for our buddy Chris Hagen. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. It's also with... Uh, uh, Omnihility and... Uh, Omnihility, yes. Right, those guys are fucking awesome, man. Yeah, black Bulldog metal at its finest, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man, they slay. Yeah, yeah. fuck dope, high boring rage. It's going to be a really good show. All ages... Yeah, all, all ages, ages yeah, slab town. Okay. Yeah, we they got a good bar though. Sip poor. <laughs> we kind of space those two shows out. Just one a month for right now. We're getting ready to go in the studio, so we're doing a lot of work. But man, after that's done, we're going to be hitting it hard. This you're going to hear a so lot of God denied. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. We're shooting a new video <laughs> the whole bit, man. A good. video too. Good. good. Oh yeah, it'll be a, our second one. That's good. Yeah. Well, which one do you have right now? Uh, it's the first song that we did, Dead Like Me, when we first came out that we shot at the Roseland Theater. Okay. Uh, that song's probably, oh, I don't know, three and a half, almost four years old now. Yeah. You guys are due. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well overdue. overdue. Well so overdue, we're we're yeah. we're gonna go hopefully in March is what we're shooting for to go back in the studio, record the album, mm-hmm. and then hopefully right at the same time shoot the video and just just release them both and then just hit the ground running. Twin assault. No, Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've actually got some live footage from The Last Sickness up there, too, and on yeah. YouTube. From the show at Sickness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's actually yeah. some really good footage. Yeah. We had a, you know, great light production, great sound. You know, it was it's a really great show. You know? And for those um, that are listening, like, around the world, actually, because we're no longer just in Oregon or right. Washington, uh, Sickness in September was a event where we had, what, like, two 40, nights? 42 bands, three four, nights. It's actually 43 or 43. 43? Yeah, yeah. okay. A friend of ours, Dan Watson, throws it. Uh, yeah, he's a uh, lead singer Truculence, and he throws it every year. I think this year was <laughs> number four or five. <laughs> yeah. No, this year was four. I can't say that name without laughing. I just four. instantly think mentors, compulsive slasher. Oh, know, it's, it's, it's like, in that vein. Oh, it's yeah, totally, definitely. It's totally sleeve. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know yeah, they're full on sleeve. <laughs> oh, totally, man. But we get yeah. people from all over America that, that attend that show. We love playing that. We're, we're already booked on that show already this yeah. year. It's, yeah. yeah, it's something we look forward to. You know, I think it's about time. Uh, we, we got some giveaways here tonight. We got T-shirts. We got CDs. We got koozies, stickers. We got everything. <laughs> God denied. You will not be denied if you call. <laughs> you will not be denied. <laughs> you will not be denied if you call 360-977-LIVE. That's 977. Wait, 360-977-5483, right? Yes. Sir. Right. All right. The sign's right there. We can see it. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's it. I'm not, on the, I'm not on that side. There we go. Thank you, Wayne. Wayne Roche, producer and owner of Coove Radio over here. Thank you very much, Yeah, Wayne. it's good to see you again, Wayne, man. It's been... A long time. It's been a while, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. welcome back to the studio, the new studio. Yeah, yeah I love the new one. studio. This place is badass. It is. It's very professional and, and yeah, very uh, nice. We appreciate everything that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Roche do. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, very, very nice people. They they help all us artists out, and uh, they help uh, people achieve their dreams. You know, okay. and it really it couldn't be done with pe- without people like him. Right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, we thank you, Wayne. Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, so many he's deals. Gonna, he's going to get excited. It's a big love fest here. But hey, what up? <laughs> All right. Oh. We have a caller. Here we go. You are on live. Thrash Zone with Billy Bolts. Who do we got on the phone? Turn your radio down. Hello? Talk. Speak. Speak English or die. They hung up. I hate oh, that happened. See, up. they got scared. <laughs> All right, Carl, when you get some balls, call back. <laughs> I think it was our California caller from the previous show. What's oh. that? Oh, yeah? Well, we we're like, oh, shit, we're on a metal Wait, show now. Code? Like, that's a metal. I wanted to talk about my alien abduction. <laughs> what area, what area we, we code? We can talk about that. Oh, I was anally probed. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It was in California, 916. 916, Sacramento. I know you got, because I'm from California. Oh, yeah, we got some friends down there. Yeah, yeah. Sacramento. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got Zorn from uh, Capital Chaos, uh, no. Capital Chaos TV. You know that, that show? I've heard of it. You've heard of it, yeah. And uh, we, we know uh, uh, Danny, Danny Shipman, and uh, David Dragon, and Ace from Reality Check TV. Oh, yeah. Good friends of the show. Nice. All right. So who wants some free stuff? God denied. T-shirts, CDs, Fucking stickers, man. koozies, foozies, whatever you freaking call these things. <laughs> Three six zero nine seven seven live. We got everything. We even got a free freaking beer over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna go. Ahead. I'm gonna play some God Deny. When we come back, we're gonna we're gonna be giving some of this stuff out. All right. So I think the next one we're gonna do is Isaac. Yeah. How does that sound? Does that, that sound track. good? Let's do Isaac. All right. This is God Denied. Prepare for the slaughter. <laughs>
Yeah, we froze up. That's modern technology for you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, man? We're working on a freaking shoestring budget here. <laughs> but, we, but we're tried and true, man. We're, we're here every week. This is your home for metal, Thrash Zone on Coob Radio. Don't you go anywhere else for all your metal needs. And I am here right now, graced by the presence of God Denied and Matt. We wanted to talk about a little history on the band. Can you please tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we came around probably, oh, I don't know, about four, four and a half years ago. Myself and another guy, Rich, who started the band. He's not with the band anymore, but uh, just kind of hit and missed. We were both coming out of other bands. And then uh, just one day, it just kind of started taking off, uh, started writing songs. About two, three weeks later, Dan here came into the band and uh, started writing lyrics. And uh, believe it or not, we were playing in my bedroom in my apartment. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> you know, I believe we, it. Had, I, we had nowhere else to play. I would tell yeah. my PA in this little hobo cart on Max. <laughs> I'd get on Max and go to his apartment and cram ourselves in this little fucking bedroom. That's next great. To his bed. He's playing a little electric kit. And just little PA. It, was, it was badass. Yeah. Eventually, we got ourselves a you know, bona fide jam room. You know. Sure. <clears throat> and, uh, man, we've just been banging it out since then. Uh, the first album... It wasn't the greatest, but it was a lot of fun. Did a lot of shows up and down, uh, you know, between here and Seattle. Up the and old I-5 five corridor. Yeah. yeah. Totally <laughs> <down there>. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, Are you guys, but, I'm just guessing here, but you guys look like you're out of southeast Portland, man. Am I, am I close? Uh, <laughs> no? Not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. No, Felony I, plaque? I, I, no, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's just say we're a little familiar with the area. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Copy taking a second. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Who hasn't done a time or two down the stroll there? Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> Unicorn? Yep. They know it. <laughs> yeah, I'm good friends with the uh, the guy at the Unicorn, John. Shit. John. Uh, you know John? <laughs> I used to live right by there. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows John at the Unicorn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Goddamn place. Old friend of the, uh, he used to be my roommate. Isn't that the place right next to the TikTok? The 24 hour bar? Over yeah. there on Pal yeah. or whatever? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's right there, yeah. A lot of uh, strange times in the old TikTok, man. Oh, man. <laughs> well, well, John, John's a cool cat, man. He, he's really cool about looking the other way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he, he's the manager there. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm kind of outing him here, but hey, man, if, you, if you're up to no good, go to the Unicorn. Dude, I mean, right. yeah, definitely. <laughs> These guys pull no fucking punches, man. I'm serious. Absolutely, yeah, man. Yeah. Fucking Not total fair. brutal, you know, kind of. Deal. Holy yeah. bro, I, I can't wait till you guys get a uh, a really polished, uh, you know, yeah, uh, full length. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This, th yeah, this uh, three song um, uh, demo that we put out here, the Beast Rising. I don't even know if you really call it demo EP or whatever, but it's not the greatest recording, but it gets the point across. But like I said, yeah. we, we, we recorded this in one day. Yeah. yeah, it's raw. It's raw and it's live, but it's it's like in your face. You either that's like one thing we like about it. You don't, you know. It's yeah. Like grr, grr, the, the album that comes out that that we're recording in March. That's going to be the the tits album. That's that's it's going to be amazing. It's going to be killer. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. You got my attention there. The what album? The tits. <laughs> the tits album, man. I, I see the cover of the CD right now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Attention, we're looking for the chick with big boobs. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, man. So um, that's there's a little background there. Now, God Denied, you guys have a show here with Katie O'Brien, at Katie O'Brien, which is at 2809 Northeast Sandy Boulevard, for those of you in, not in the know. And that is going to be with a Coic. And who is this other one? High Boring Ridge. Yeah. <laughs> and there's one more. Embryonic Devourment. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and Embryonic Devourment is actually coming up from Northern California. Yeah, they're from Willis, They're, they're uh, some of the brothers in okay. uh, NYDM. And, yep. uh, Hi. Uh, Hi. Like That's to get be. everybody out to support, you know, the touring band and help yeah. get them some fucking road money. Uh, get them drunk and fucking have, uh, show them a good time, you know. And that's going to be Saturday, February 15th. It's going to be their... Uh, Valentine's Day slaughter. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and embryonic environment. It's just a, a band, a force to be reckoned with. Those guys are just sick. Yeah, yeah. I'm super yeah. technical, fucking yeah. death metal, man. Well, they're, they're really great. That's cool, man. Yeah. I'm all about God denied, though. I, I think these guys, that's why I asked you in here. <laughs> Seriously, I wouldn't ask you in here. Like, right? Hey, man, these guys kick some ass. Hey, and we're giving some of this stuff away. I'm not, I'm not just keeping all this for myself. I'm sharing the love. And uh, that's yeah, why if you call, call in, man, right yeah. now. 
Where's all the fans? 360-977-LIVE. Yeah, maybe Monday night, but God damn it, call. Oh, yeah, they're out there. <laughs> they're just, they get scared, man. I don't know what it is. They'll they're be afraid. They're, they're all stoned. <laughs> they call, they call, yeah, they're too stoned, they're too lazy, they can't find the buttons, I don't know, what the hell. <laughs> That's 360-977-5483. You can call, I'll give you CDs, I'll give you t-shirts, I'll give you even a signed autograph of Ivan DePrume of White Zombie, for God's sake. We got it all here at Draftstone. God dang. I don't know. Anybody? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, man. Anything else you guys want to uh, tell your fans out there that's uh, listening but too chicken to frickin' call? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I, I hear something. I fucking no, head play going records are fucking listening. What the, where the fuck are those? Guys? Yeah. Oh, uh, Dylan? Oh, yeah, God. Dylan. Don't get him there. started. <laughs> <laughs> He wanted to kill my dog the last time he called me. <laughs> kill your mother and rape your dog. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna play another track off uh, God Denied and their uh, demo. What's the name of that st- uh, demo by the way? The uh, The Beast Rising is the name of the demo. The Beast Rising. Actually it's a limited print. Nice artwork too, by the way. Uh yeah, the the, yeah. the, the oh. artist on that is uh Zisla Bixinski. He was a Polish artist, uh fucking Holocaust survivor. Killed by his fucking uh, caretaker's son for 25 bucks. Yeah, wow. it's a pretty intense uh, artist. And actually, uh, you know, there's a limited run of those. Uh, we only did, what, 200 of them. And uh, there's four different versions of it, three different versions of it. <laughs> <laughs> I and, see four uh, guys standing here, but only three before me. Where's the four Yeah, the guy? guitar player lives out on the coast. He couldn't make it tonight. Yeah. You know, oh, okay. You know, he's a fisherman. He's got to be a fucking on the boat for him. You know? Yeah. yeah. Got to so, make his money, man. Selling right. that shrimp <laughs> for a scrub style. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he's probably listening right now. Going, yeah, right, you love bastards. bastards. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know, before we go to the next song, uh, the last song that we just played, which was Isaac, you right. said you had a story on Well, it. So it's kind of a retelling of the uh, story of Isaac uh, instead of... Uh, Instead of being uh, killed Sorry, by Mike. <laughs> <laughs> instead of being killed by his dad, like in the name of God, you know, God testing. He's uh his mom watches. They're like kind of out in the woods, back in the little shack, and his mom watches Christian TV a lot, and she gets all freaked out, and so she like takes away everything from him. Then she locks him in a room, and then finally she kills him and buries him out back in the Mark grave, and uh. Yeah, you know, about being brainwashed by God and... A, a killing for God. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh-huh. how, yeah. How, in the name uh, of the Lord. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's been more God, I mean, more blood spilled in the name of God than anything else yeah. ever in, in war. Yeah. It's, Think it's, about it's it. It's horrible. What, what, what has mankind always fought over? Land, God, and money. And money. And money. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's all there is. Well, it's like, you know, like fighting over uniforms. <laughs> well, you know, you yeah, tell pussy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can die for 100 that. versions that you haven't met yet, but hey, whatever. I want to see the fight for unicorns, though. Well, you, know, I mean, you believe in God, you believe in unicorns, right? Because they're both made up. I, I just made a new cartoon series here. <laughs> the fight for unicorns. <laughs> yeah, don't stab your shit. Dude. Yeah, right. On Fox TV. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, last, the last track that we have that's on this demo is Chained and Divine. Now, that, is yes. that two songs that are No, like, it's one. It is it's one It's about song. being chained to uh, the belief in God. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like the Catholic uh, I mean, I think kind of the philosophy between uh, behind God Denied is, uh, you know, that you don't need... Uh, you know, a higher power. Or we have a caller. Sorry. Oh, we have a caller. Well, wow! Right someone we'll wants put, our stuff. We'll put that on hold. All right, yeah, let's put that on hold. <laughs> Go ahead. This is Thrash Zone with Billy Bold. Who do we got on the phone? Hello. Yes. Who is this? My name is Matt. Hey, Matt. Are you here in the Portland area? Yeah, we're in Vancouver. You're in Vancouver, <laughs> so you want some of this stuff, don't you? We're watching it right now. Nice. Oh, we found the webcam. Here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, you know, we are giving some stuff away. Um, I'll give you your choice. You can either get a T-shirt, a CD, S- or just some swag. Or a signed picture. Oh, yeah. Well, we have Ivan Dupram. We'll throw in that as well. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this is all about God Denied tonight. <laughs> you want a new shirt? <laughs> you want a T-shirt? 
Is anybody home? No, I already got all their stuff. I just <laughs> wanted to. I wanted to hear them talk about a couple things. What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead. You're, you're talking hey. to the band right now, so go ahead and ask your question. Well, we need to turn yeah. down the radio in the back, though, or the chick. Uh, the, the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we ain't turning that chick down. <laughs> turn, turn the girl down. I got a way to make her stop talking. <laughs> I think we all do. Well, I, wanted to hear, I wanted to hear from Dan about some of his lyrical content, and then I wanted to hear about some of their uh, punk rock roots. Uh -huh. Oh, good uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> Very good questions. Oh, see, we need Dan, more calls like that. Yeah, right. What, yeah. what do you want to know? Everything. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're partying over there. Oh, hey, 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 Matt. Okay, here, here's the thing: is is which song do you want to know about some of the lyrical content? Well, any of the three authors. How about that? Armies of the yeah. Damned? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's start there. You want to know about Armies of the Damned? What's that one about? You Satan worshiper? <laughs> I don't believe about, in Satan. <laughs> well, it's a mythical song about Satan rising his armies up through hell and taking over the world and extincting the mankind. Extinction of mankind. Yeah. 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 It's armies like, of the Damned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Control the meek. <laughs> Does that answer your question? That does, and also I wanted to hear about, you know, some of the roots. Where, do this, where does this band come from, you know? What are the, some of the bands they listen to? And well, we covered well, Dan's got some fucking history here, too, you know, that... <laughs> we co we covered some of that, you know, like, uh... Well, God Denied, like Josh is getting ready to touch on, what, what, what God Denied actually is, you know, we do write about a lot of religious, more satanic things like that, but what God Denied actually is... Uh, like like I said, Josh was touching on is, is God tonight is about being bigger than you actually are. Being a good person, it, it, it all, it's all about you. Don't need uh, the hierarchies of the organized religion, all this bullshit, to tell you that you're a good person. And what covers it more than God and denying Him? It covers everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just all about being a strong person in yourself. Take responsibility for your own life and your That's actions. Right. That's right. There, there you go. go. The name God Denied actually came from an old buddy of ours, uh, Steve Sundin. Uh, when uh, we started this band, we were fumbling around with all kinds of names, and he came up with God Denied, and one day it just it just snapped. It was like, man, that is cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it, it originally it was going to be G-O-D-D-E-N-I-D, -D -D -E and he's like, no, 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 put it together, put it together. And then, unfortunately, we lost Steve here a few, uh, about four and a half years ago, about the time the band started, and that's when we went, that's it, we got to carry on that legacy. Hey, rest in peace, brother. You mean he passed away? Yeah, he did. Oh, wow. He, okay. he actually did on a tour. He was, uh, you know, doing his thing. Yeah. But, uh, Who was we he on tour with? That doesn't matter. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some things we don't bring up. Yeah, don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> anyway, that, <yeah. laughs> anyway, that's 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 where a lot of it comes from. So you know, as far as the, um, you know, we're touching on many different bases here. As far as the the meanings of the songs, how the songs are titled, what we're after, the name the name of the band, it's just there's a whole lot to it. You know, uh, yeah. So does that help? Yeah, totally. All right, so you yeah, can go to bed tonight. Huh? So you're just going to have nightmares, that's all. Well, I don't think he's going to bed tonight. I think we're going there for the after-hours party. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Sounds like he's got chicks over there. <laughs> a At least a babysitter. <laughs> uh, quite the time delay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, well, I'll tell you what, man. We're going we're gonna to play a, one more track from God Denied. Mm -hmm. This yeah. one's called Chained Divine. Divine. Are you ready for that? Crank it up.
right, here, okay. put me on. Yes, here we are, thrash zone. I am here. I'm on fire. <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> We, we, we were denied. Yeah. <laughs> We've never denied it, Thrash Zone. Never. We don't deny people here. We, we're all about satisfaction. Ooh, not! No. <laughs> no. We are here with God Denied. Three great guys. Matt, Dan, Joshua. Correct? Right. Oh, hey, I got it right. He nailed yes. it. First step. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. it. No. Yeah. yeah. Got to remember Shane. He's not here, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. him too. Uh, no, but I'm just ter I'm terrible with names. When I, when I, once I know you, I'll know you for life, dude. But but your name for, just register. Uh, yeah, I think right. a couple of I totally understand. That's all. You know how it is, right? Oh yeah. I bet yeah. you don't know my name. Ah, uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you didn't give me long enough to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh. God deny. These guys are really cool, man. Unfortunately, they only have three tracks that's on their demo, and and that's all we have for this evening. But that's okay because we can still talk about the band, Matt. <laughs> What did you want to bring up? Uh, Are you on the spot? Oh, no <laughs> crap. Anybody. Here we uh, go. Uh, <laughs> just once again, that we're going to the studio March. The album will be coming out soon. I uh, also, uh, once again, want to give uh, hell to my brothers and sisters in the NYDM worldwide. NFL, NFL ID, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just look out for the shows. Uh, the February, March shows coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Especially the, yeah, it's going to be February 15th. Yes. Over at Katie O'Brien. Man, that place is awesome. It's fucking stiff pour. They got That'd 50, be our first time playing there. Fifty six beers on tap, man. Right. That place is awesome. Fifty six, huh? Not yeah, too shabby. Fuck. Haven't done haven't done that place yet. Yeah. And then one uh, beer at a time. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 Bottles of beer on the wall. Yeah. yeah. And and we're, we're, uh, last, we're gonna be all kinds of fun. We're gonna be yeah. fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then March seventh over at fucking Slab Town, it's a memorial for our brother Chris Hagen, you know, that died of a massive brain aneurysm. We're trying to Get some money together for his family, and that is an all know, ages show. All ages Bring show. Bring your kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let us torment your kids for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really cool, man. I love the name Slab Town, though. I, I don't know. I so just, do I. I get off on that name. It, it, it kind of God denied in Slab Town again. Yeah, it's the whole thing is really cool. You know, <laughs> the place is awesome. The place what a is great, awesome! And it's a great, great place to have such a benefit too. Yeah, definitely. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, right. Slab Town. But hey, but, I mean, whatever. It, well, just, it just reminds me of the studio here since we were an old Yeah, and this, morgue. this was formerly the morgue. Where, I mean, seriously. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. This is formerly the morgue where you're at right now. This, <laughs> yeah. We're sitting on the Norm slab right now. It smells like dead yeah. bodies in here. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> this is where you end <laughs> up, man. <laughs> <Starting> <laughs> right here. <laughs> Coob Radio. Uh, <laughs> this is where it all ends. <laughs> uh, that's all, we're, we're cool with that. <laughs> right? <laughs> if this is my hell, then I'm fine with that. All yeah, right. <laughs> You know, one of my favorite movies is uh, um, Hellraiser. Oh, oh yeah, I love that uh, movie. It, they're uh, rebooting that, by the way. Fail. No, <laughs> no yeah. No, Clive Barker's writing it and everything. Is he oh, really? Oh. Yeah, but Clive Barker can't even do Clive Barker, man. When he was doing the later Hellraiser movies, like you know, he wasn't after doing four, those later ones though. Yeah, they those sucked. Dude. They were I, all different guys. Yeah, after the um, the one where it's it was like a prequel where it started over again. Uh, the Bloodline. 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 Yeah, when they did Bloodline, that was the last good. Hell Bloodlines was amazing, but after that, it was all crap. Yeah, yeah I and agree. when they lost, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Pinhead. Uh, the actor's name. Who cares? Pinhead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know you're talking about. It. Yeah, I know totally you're talking about. I, I forget his name right now, but guy, I mean, I know it. Oh, that sucks. I'm not, I, I know his name somewhere. But, uh, <laughs> the yeah. beers are flowing over here. I know. The radio. One of them. Okay, one, let's think about. It. One of them is Ashley Lawrence. Okay, that's the one that's on all the first four. It's a uh, Doug. Doug Bradley. Yes, exactly. Ah, I knew yeah, it. No, and, and that's right. We were talking about this the other night. Yeah, Doug, Doug Bradley, Bradley is coming pinhead. back. Doug Bradley's coming back nice. for that shit. Nice. It's going to be killer. I don't, the only pinhead. Yeah. <laughs> the guy who played him last sucks. Check this out. I don't want anyone to go anywhere because we're going to be back with God Denied. But first, I promise this, so I need to deliver this. And that is Kurt Brett of Dirty Rotten Imbeciles. His interview that we conducted right before the Portland show. Wayne, are you prepared for that? Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, but before we do that, let me let me go ahead and grace us with a little bit of DRI. And I don't need society. That's only uh, one minute and a half, Wayne. 
So <laughs> be, ready, be ready to hit the play I'm button. Ready. All right. Don't go nowhere. Here we go with some DRI. And for those of you that were there at the Hawthorne, that was a freaking killer show, man. The women were throwing it down. I got I to gotta say right now, World of Lies and DRI were kick ass. Gotta love Seriously. Mobilize. Oh my God. And the, love the, our brothers in Mortal Eyes. The women, <laughs> the women of Portland impressed me so much, dude. <laughs> April Jones was off the hook, stage diving and just like crazy. I mean, it was <laughs> That's just, what Tony Avila was saying. He said the whole show was just amazing. <laughs> the women were just as bad as the men, dude. I swear to God. <laughs> they were in the pit, dude, really throwing it down. I wanted to just give them two horns up. Hell yeah. yeah. And this is I Don't Need Society. This is Thrash Show with Billy Bull. Who we got on the line? Kurt Brecht, DRI, and PND. PND and DRI. Kurt Brett. Kurt, you're going to be playing a show here in Portland. That's going to be... Yes, sir. Yeah, that's going to be uh, on the 15th. Is that right? In two days? Right. Excellent. Uh, how did that... Um, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. How did your tour go? You guys were uh, in Mexico uh, just last week or in the last couple of days? No, that was just me down there. I was just doing some press for uh, Pasadena Napalm Division. Ah. I had like a week of press down there. But DRI just came back from uh, Peru and Brazil. Excellent. How'd that, how'd that go over there? That was really good. A lot of fun. Yeah, I was talking with uh, Caden DePena of Hyrax um, a few weeks ago. Right. And uh, his, he told me that there's quite a scene going on down there in uh, South America and, and in those countries. Uh, I was yeah, it's really it really opened up in the last years. That's great. So they were really receptive to DRI. Oh yeah, That's they had a third time, third tour we've done in Brazil. That's nice. So um, when you guys come up here uh, originally, um, I thought it was going to be like with an '80s lineup. Is that no longer happening? I'm not really sure. I mean, um, we've talked about it, I guess, with the promoters. You know, I don't know what's going on with it yet. I'd say it would probably be in California first. If we did it on the West Coast, you know, we might just do, like, San Francisco, Oakland, right. L.A., right. San Diego, something like that. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm not really in touch with the uh, promoters on that and everything, I'm waiting to find out what their thoughts are. Yeah, well, I know that uh, as far as the fans go, um, you know, I've, I've tossed that that idea around to see what they would think of it. And every, just everyone would just love to see that. And, uh, you know, even, yeah. yeah, me included. I mean, those those were good times back then. And that was, that was a classic DRI lineup back in those days. And that was with... Yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun because uh, we didn't, you know, obviously we only played songs from that era when we did the shows in Texas. Yeah. So I kind of miss doing some of the, the, new, the, I wouldn't say newer songs, but, you know, from, from the 90s. Um, I missed a few of those, but at the same time we did a bunch of songs that we hadn't played in a long time from the 80s it just gave me like total goosebumps to be playing them again and it was a lot of fun <laughs> that's cool yeah that would be great to, see, to hear some of those classics from uh, crossover dealing with it the first album that would be good stuff i mean we play a lot of that stuff anyway yeah but we just you know we had to add other songs that we don't normally play to fill in the gaps of the you know because we took away so many songs 
sure. And plus the songs, the 90s were, songs. Uh, they were a lot shorter and a lot faster back then, too. <laughs> they were like 30 seconds <laughs> long, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you had songs like Commuter Man and, and uh, Sad to Be and, and all, all, all those songs. Those are classics. Mm -hmm. So, Kurt, um, everyone's glad that DRI is going to be playing up here in Portland. And, um, you know, of course, everyone wants to know, when's DRI going to record a new, uh, new CD? Well, we've, uh, we talk about it and stuff. It's just we, you have to understand that we're getting so many offers to play all over the world that it's kind of hard to slow down. And it's actually, you would think, oh, well, they've been, they've been back now for three years and everything, but actually they're just, you know, the offers keep getting better and better. Yeah. So to stop and, and write a record and, and record it and, you know, all that stuff, it's just, um, it would be kind of counterproductive at this point. But it, there will be a time when we will want to go back in the studio. But, um, you know, I, I went in the studio recently with P&D and our album came out this summer. So I've been pushing that and everything. So I don't want to be, you know, like saying i got to have a DRI album also. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be too pushy or whatever. I'm happy and thankful that I have one new album out last year. So PND being Pasadena Napalm Division, for those that don't know. And uh, that, in its own right, is a great band as well. Uh, I play with 100 Beers with a Zombie uh, on the show all the time. I, I love that oh, song. Cool. Oh, it's a great tune. <laughs> it does very well yeah, on my it's show. Fun, it's fun one to play live, too. Yeah, how about PND? Let's talk about that, actually, for a little bit. Um, what, what are you guys doing Um as a band, are you going to be playing a, a tour, a new album there? Well, well, we've been promoting the album around Texas, which is our strongest area so far. Sure. Since we haven't played out of Texas very much, except in Louisiana. And uh, like I said, I was just in Mexico doing some promo there, trying to get some gigs set up um, for P and D down there. DRI already does really good in Mexico. So talking to some promoters and doing some press, you know, um, interviews on TV and radio and all that. Sure. Magazines and stuff. So giving a push there, and because it's so close, I mean, I can fly to Mexico City. It's like an hour and a half flight. Oh yeah, for you that's so that really is close. close. You know, it's for us to fly down there and start playing shows, and just like South America, Mexico is a really good place to play too. So is PND based out of Houston as well? Yes. Oh okay. One guy lives in San Antonio, one is in Austin, and the other three are in the Houston area. Cool. All right. Are you so, like, we got a gig. As soon as I get back from Portland and Seattle with DRI, then I have a gig here in uh, Belmont, Texas with, with P&D. And then after that, DRI goes on the 70,000 tons of metal. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's over... Uh, the first time to go on one of those cruises, and yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, we, I forget who it was. We had someone, uh, one of our guests, it might have been Steve Smythe. Um, saying that he was going to be on that. I, I forget who, what, Wayne, do you remember who that was? Yeah, but it was someone recently saying it, that, uh, that they're going to be on that as well. And that, that's a, uh, a yacht, or a, a, yeah, it's a yacht cruise line, yeah, where, um, you know, a lot of, bands, sure. a lot of bands go on that and, uh, and fans, and um, you just take a little cruise out there and listen to metal. <laughs> Live you go, yeah, for a couple of days and you go to Mexico and then you have like a day off in Mexico, the beach there, and then, then you go back again. And I guess each band plays several times throughout the cruise and um, the rest of the time everybody's just hanging out. There's no just regular people on the cruise. I mean, the, it's all people that are into the bands, you know, it's all fans or bands. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, but it should be very interesting. Yeah, I, I think that would be a great time. Are you, um, you going to be going to NAMM by any chance? This year? No. Not this year? Okay. Okay. I was thinking of going myself. Uh, I had an opportunity. Uh, Neil Turbin um, offered us all uh, badges if we wanted to go and be his guest. And we're still thinking about that. <laughs> but it doesn't look too good. But yeah, it, it's kind of hard for us to get, out, get away from Portland and, um, and fly down to L.A. But, yeah. All right, so DRI, man. You guys are going to be playing, I believe it's going to be at the Hawthorne Theater. Um, you're going to be playing with World of Lies. World of Lies uh, was in the studio a few weeks ago. And uh, I can tell you right now, those guys can't wait to do another show with you. Uh, I was talking with... Oh, good. Yeah, you, you, uh, you, you're familiar with Tony Avila, right? Of World of Lies? He was, Tony Avila. Yeah, he said uh, yes. there was a time when you guys played and uh, your drummer 
Uh, I guess it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rob okay, Happy. Yeah. He couldn't make it, and you guys were just asking people, hey, who can play drums for us? And everyone was taking turns. He was he was one of the guys that, that uh, played for you. Okay, that, yeah, yeah, I know I know the name. I should, yeah, uh, yeah. Facebook friend and everything. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it, that was so funny. I was just telling somebody today that that time, it wasn't funny then. I can look back and laugh now. But, um, yeah, our drummer had to bail, and we uh, we had to do a, a couple shows with in Seattle and Portland with just some fans jumping up there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're hoping, like, you know, we don't want to just can Some bands, I guess, would just cancel and say, fuck it, you know, give everybody their money back kind of thing. But yeah. try to make it happen anyway, and, and you have to take that chance, like, that the, are the fans going to forgive you and then come back to the show next time? <laughs> yeah. Or they just say, oh, they sucked, and then they'll never come back again, you know what I mean? But um, we already played since then again, and it was it's like everybody forgave us, and everybody was there, and, you know, our drummer was back, and everything was okay, so that's good. Yeah, the last time you guys played in Portland, the, the line was literally around the block. Uh, I, I remember that. It was, it was wow. insane. Amazing. Yeah, so you know, the fans are always going to come back, Kurt. People love DRI. What's, a, what's that little club we always used to play uh, uh, I there? I think it's the Satyricon. It closed down. Satyricon. Satyricon, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a classic yeah, place. That place. Even though it was hot as hell. Yeah, it's a, it's a sweat bar, but I, miss it. I still I still miss it though. Yeah, they tore that down, and I guess it's some kind of like apartment project now. But oh well, uh, good memories though. Yeah, yeah. So, Kurt, we were um, we were talking earlier, and um, you've written a couple of books, and uh, you know, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I, I wasn't too familiar with that part of you. What books uh, were? What, well, Back, you know, back in the, when DRI first started and we were so poor and broke all the time and everything, and that, you know, I saw other singers like Henry Rollins and, uh, and others like, you know, selling their books and writing books and selling them at the shows and stuff. And I thought, well, man, I could, I could, I could put a little bit of extra money in my pocket and sure. I could actually eat, you know, and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, so we started, I, I started, you know, compiling diaries, I guess you could say, and, uh, Memoir. my journals. And I put my first book, uh, Notes from the Nest, my first real book, I guess you could say, um, that was, you know, I'd done an actual bindery and all that stuff was um, called Notes from the Nest. And it was the minimum amount of pages that they could do. So I was trying to get it done as cheaply as possible. Uh -huh. So it was the minimum amount of pages where they could still do that kind of binding or whatever. And, and um, they sold pretty good. And that was it, a mission accomplished, you know. And after that, I was never, like, totally broke where I couldn't eat and stuff. I always had a little, making a little bit of extra money every day. So you upgraded and I to Top Ramen, right? several times and <laughs> all that stuff. So no more Top Ramen? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, on tour, yeah, on tour, that would have been a luxury. <laughs> now on tour, you just have to eat it, you know, like Circle K, 7-Eleven, stuff like that. Yeah, the, 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 time. the soup kitchen of that city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, anyway, I just kept writing books after that, and after a while, I just got I had too many books, and each time you press them, you had to make it like a minimum of like a thousand to make it work, you know, cheap enough to make it worthwhile. Sure. And pretty soon, my apartment was just stacked with boxes all the time, just you know, <laughs> wall to wall. <laughs> yeah. In uh, each book, you know, each book of four of them, and thousands of them all over the place, and it was just got too crazy. So I eventually just sold them all, and now. I recorded uh, myself reading the book, and then I, it's like a book on CD. Is that still and available? I was, selling those for, I was selling those for a while on tour, and it was easier because I could just, you know, make a few of them on my computer before I left on the tour, so sure. like that. So th those are still available then? Uh, I could make some, yeah. I mean, I just, lately I haven't been doing it because it's just, I haven't had much time, but sure. I could easily do it. They don't sell, like, hot cakes or anything, but it's nice to have them just in case somebody asks. Well, I, I would think that would be pretty interesting because, um, you know, the, the one thing I, I love about your lyrics, Kurt, and, uh, and the music of DRI is you guys write songs about real-life topics. I mean, I can totally identify with uh, Under the Overpass or uh, right. Syringes in the Sandbox, those kind of songs. I mean, that's real talk, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that, right. that's something that I can tell Inner city about. problems. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just stuff like, you know, from back in the day when you guys lived in the Bay Area. You know, um, those songs, it's like, what, it's like you're talking to me, it's, you know, <laughs> about real life things day to day. Yeah, That's good. Mission accomplished. Yeah, Glad man. you like it. Oh, yeah, I love it. Great lyrics. Great lyrics, Kurt. All right, well, we just wanted to uh, touch base with you since you are here in town in Portland. And uh, is there anything you want to say to your fans? 
I just can't wait to be there again. It's some of our best shows in the United States. That is, uh, you know, when we go and play in Seattle and Portland. And it's always, almost every time now, we just go up there and play those two shows and we go home. Seattle and Portland? Like, yep, we just go up there and play it and we go home. It's never like on a tour or anything. We just kind of go up there and play those gigs. We're done. We're out of there. Oh, yeah. I, I imagine it's going to be and, a uh, sold-out show. It's going to be yeah. packed. Yeah, because every yeah, and it's always it's always fun, always great, always really cool people there. I can say right now, Kurt, there's a big buzz going on uh, about this show, and people um, people are very excited to have you guys up here in a couple of days. So that's going to be great. Sweet. Uh, All right. Tell them I'll have uh, plenty of T-shirts and CDs and patches, <laughs> and got some new stuff available. So. All right. Well, we all look forward to it. Well, uh, all right. All right. See you there. That is Kurt Brett of Dirty Rotten Imbeciles, Pasadena Napalm Division fame. And don't miss them January 15th at the Hawthorne Theater. Thank you, Kurt. Yeah. And that was our live, at the time, interview with Kurt Brett, which was <laughs> yeah, which is now dead. No, <laughs> it was recorded Wednesday um, for everyone that, uh, in case you were wondering. And I did have the date wrong. I kept saying it was the 15th, but the date was actually the 17th. <laughs> but I was so excited because I was talking to Kurt fucking Brett, man. Yeah, right. So you guys, you got to forgive me. You got to love that. Yeah, I mean, look, man, as a vocalist, seriously, guys, that is like one of my idols. Per, right you know, on, right me, on. Kurt Brett and Ozzy Osbourne is what got me to sing. Nice. You know? <laughs> so to, to be able to, to know Kurt the way I do is, is, is such a treat, you know, because... Uh, he is. He's he's really cool, man. I, I'm 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 so blessed to be able to have friends like Kurt Brett. Right. All right, man. So we're here in studio with God Denied. We're gonna wrap up the show because uh, it's time to go home for some of us. Even though some of us are just waking up. <laughs> Woo! It's just getting started. <laughs> yeah, I'm one yeah. of those man. Creature of the night. Those of you yeah. in France, good morning. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. for uh, for God Denied, um, the party does continue at my house. All right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, and I just so we're gonna keep mad up and mad up till he has to go to work. Yeah. There's always some like fucking yeah. 4 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, no, my alarm clock goes off 5:30, but oh, you know, it's oh, yeah. yeah. still fucking. Oh, that's late as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking six hours from now, man. What are you worried about? <laughs> yeah, we're we're good. Yeah. So Matt, what did you want to say? Uh, any last parting thoughts for your fans? Uh, yeah, hey man, just love all the the help and support. Love everybody that's uh, that's uh, got God tonight's back. Just come out and see the shows. Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, uh, and that's that. NFL ID. Yeah, <laughs> fucking support your local chapter. You know, fucking uh, you know, get out to shows. Uh, you know, support local artists and musicians and and homeless people. And that's <laughs> right. God. Get crackheads into rehab, you know, like, <laughs> fuck, come, come on, on you know, you let's, let's, let's bring our scene up. Come and, on, come and, on, Dan, uh, intervene on that. Yeah. Dan, any last thoughts? <laughs> yeah, uh, Jasmine, Bella, Angelica, I love you guys. All right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know Kelsey's and in make bed. make sure you're in bed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Get your ass in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Get home before your ass is out in the, in the, in the doghouse. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, man. I want to thank everybody for listening to us tonight. I want to make sure that all of you are back here next week. We're going to have Betrayed by Weakness. We're going to have the album release of their newest record. It's going to be freaking off the hook. That's next week at www.cooradio.com. Thrash Zone, Monday night from 9 to 11. Thank you all for listening. Thank Here's you. a couple of tunes. There's Separation of Sanity with Grinder. Yeah. Yeah.